Hey everybody, it's Lee here. Uh, I want to answer a question that we've been asked quite a few times now since we are a recognized CBO uh, by the FAA. And the question is, what do I need to establish a FRIA for my flying location? Now this is a great question and, um, and I want to address that. Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind is the FAA has a, a process in place right now, but it, there's a, a little bit of a flaw in it and it's causing some confusion where people think that they can just go on to the FAA Drone Zone website and uh, actually apply themselves with no authorization from the CBO. Uh, that is incorrect. We're working with the FAA right now to get that fixed. But um, just know as you go through all of the, the following steps and everything that you will need to uh, contact us so we can uh, give you the authorization. But I wanted to make a, this little video for you to give you an update on how we're going about it and how you can go about making your uh, site, your field, a uh, FTCA FRIA. So the, the first thing that you're going to need to make your field an FTCA FRIA is the individual that's going to oversee or be in charge of the field uh, must be a paid FTCA member. Now, this is not uh, anything above and beyond the air crew membership. This is just the, the normal air crew membership, yearly membership. Um, but the individual who is going to be in charge needs to have that. And that's uh, because of the um, accountability process and everything that we put in our uh, safety guidelines that we have to uh, you know buy by uh, for the FAA so that's the the, the first thing um, that you're going to need and then I've got a, a checklist that you'll see uh, in um, we'll have it on the the FTCA website but also in the, the description below you'll be able to see it and this checklist is taken right from the FAA website um, and I'm just gonna run down it real quick for you and explain uh, a couple of different things it, it goes first you have to have an application title um, which just name it whatever your fields name is going to be then it's gonna ask you if you're a CBO or a um, educational institution now this is where you, you're gonna you'll choose the FTCA but um, you have to have it verified by us because it's gonna ask who is the authorized representative and um, as of right now uh, I am the only quote unquote authorized representative for the FTCA so you have to get um, everything you know cleared so we can we can put my name on there um, and once that is verified um, you just mark that box in there uh, the next thing you're gonna put down on the form is the primary point of contact now this is gonna be first name last name email phone and the primary point of contact um, their physical address now this is not the address of the flying site uh, the Freya um, or flying field whatever you guys call it this is the address of and the name and email of the point of contact um, then the next thing on there is going to be the physical address of the proposed Freya um, so where it's going to be and if it's off say it's off the beaten path and there are directions on how you have to turn right at the rock and go down through the swamp and up you have to put all of those details in there as well if it is off of um, just like a you know a regular address location um, and then uh, the next thing you're going to need is the location of the proposed Freya as far as the latitude and the longitude. Now to go about that, I just use um, Google, the Google Maps. That's a, a good way to, to use uh, or to get that and to use that. Um, and then it's going to ask you what kind of boundary type. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky for some. Uh, the boundary type is either you could do a circle where you'll have a point in the middle of the circle and then you have, um, you find like the, the radius uh, and um, the area in which it'll cover. So if you have a, for instance, you put uh, your latitude and your longitude at, at a certain point and then you say 500 feet um, you know, from that point to the outer, outer edge of the circle, 
obviously that's going to be your boundary. Now if you have areas where you need, you can't do a circle for a boundary, you're going to have to do like a polygon um, and you'll have to have multiple uh, vertexes and basically what they'll do is these are going to be boundary lines and you'll have to have longitude and latitude for those boundary lines as well. So if you're on uh, the edge of a, a property that you know you, that you don't have permission to cross this line, um, you'll have to make sure you have that boundary line or that your circle uh, doesn't cross over um, that line as well. Uh, now the next thing you're going to need um, if necessary is an airspace authorization or a uh, letter of agreement for the, the space in which you're at. Now one of the things that I've been telling people too is like there's, uh, if you are on city or county or township land, whatever government land, you make sure you have all of the, the proper, uh, re the required documents as far as um, the, uh, the, the use form, like they, they're giving you permission to do the operations on there. So uh, that's, that's important. If you don't need it, then you just don't need it. Now what you're gonna need to know is if the FRIA is going to overlap an already fixed site. Um, and there are, there's a difference between flying sites, fixed flying sites that the FAA approves and also FRIAs. So you're gonna to need to know if it overlaps a fixed flying site already um, or if it doesn't. And then here's another big thing is uh, uh, the next thing you're gonna need the description um, of the purpose and the need for your FRIA. You can't just throw in there, oh, I just wanna fly. I, although that may be the reason you want to and I, we, we encourage everybody to just wanna fly. They give you a box of um, that you have 500 characters in which you can use to briefly, but in enough detail, explain the purpose and the need for your FRIA. Uh, then you need to know the average number of flights that are gonna be there per week, the average length of time per week of those flights, and then the type of aircraft. Now they're gonna give you like three columns and it's gonna say fixed wing and then it'll say electric gas or turbine and then it'll say helicopter, electric gas turbine and multi-copter electric gas turbine and you just, you'll have to uh, mark each one of those boxes. Um, the next thing is you're gonna have to know if there's going to be dawn or dusk operations. This is a simple yes or no. And then um, night operations, again, a simple yes or no. Now this checklist is gonna help you uh, be able to fill out the, the form on the FAA's website. But like I said before, you're gonna have to have authorization uh, from us uh, so that we are going to you know, verify or be able to verify that you are uh, following the guidelines from the FTCA for that particular FRIA. Um, as of right now, it's just going to, you, you need to have all this information and contact us and you'll be able to see uh, down below the, the contact form that's on our website. It's going to be the best way in which to contact us. Um, so once you have all this information, contact us and you'll end up talking to me uh, for now and we'll get you moving on getting your FRIA set up. If at any point you have any questions at all, please ask us and uh, we'll, we'll help out uh, to the best of our ability. So until, until then, thank you and uh, we'll see you next time.